Hi, I'm Francisca and I created this video as a public service announcement for all of you out there who want to be famous singers out there, put out your original content and make your money back and more by performing. I went around and asked some of the top singers out there or the ones who were available to send in videos to talk about their truth, their experiences when it comes to investing into their passion projects, their original music and how it has been for them, the return on the investment, slash has this been an income to support themselves and their families. So I hope this is a valuable experience for you. As for myself, I went from singing, composing, to producing, then podcasting, where this is probably on the podcast, where I talk about lots of the issues, lots of the issues that come up for female singers and other entertainers and performers. And what I have learned over podcasting and then transitioning into coaching, there's stuff and there are hobbies we love doing. And then there are skills that we have due to the stuff we love doing and the projects we love doing that people find so much value in and that they would find tons of value enough to pay uh, women like us. So without any further ado, here are our stars. Hi everyone, it's Nahama Kohn. I just wanted to talk about music and creating a business around music and what that looks like for me. So music has always been my passion. Currently and in the past, I invest a lot of time, energy, and money into my music projects, but the only thing I really, really expect from any of these endeavors is connection with others and seeing that people are inspired and moved by my music. So anything else, whether the value is monetary or otherwise, is just a bonus. When I set out to create an album, my only intention really was to share my heart and connect with others and make that dream of sharing my gift with the world a reality. Hi everyone, my name is Esther Freeman. I am a singer-songwriter performer and also a single mom of four beautiful children. Since I was young, I always wanted to be a singer, and when I was 19, after having finished seminary and writing my first 11 songs on guitar, I came home to Miami, Florida and started singing around the world. And since then, my main focus, aside from my children, has been, you know, wanting to do the music and get my, get my messages out there. Um, but knowing how it, hard it is to record music in terms of the finances and also the PR of, of getting your name out there, I realized that A number one, first of all, everything happens at the right time. And the less I force something, the more authentic and um, gen in, in a genuine way it happens. So what was important for me to remember is that um, I wasn't looking at my music uh, in a business sense. Uh, it's important to remember that you are worth the money that people will spend on you. But being in the industry as an orthodox female singer, it wasn't exactly something that I could look at from a very professional business sense. So I utilized whatever I could with my talents to make money in other ways. For instance, I used to be, um, I used to do music and movement uh, for preschools uh, all around. And I was giving guitar lessons for a number of years and doing mommy and me's. So I was utilizing my skill in singing and playing guitar and composing and the energy that I have uh, in other ways to make money and to um, utilize my talent. So my message to all of you is to look at it from a very practical sense and don't get caught up in the big picture. Focus on the small things that you can do today to further your business, uh, your venture in the music industry. Hello. So I'm Alina Tal and I wanted to share with you a little bit of what I do besides my first love which is singing on stage, performing in concerts and recitals. Um, that was what I was trained to do. That is where I went to college for and graduate school and in my professional singing career. But in addition, I've had the pleasure of giving back to people and teaching what I learned to girls and to women through voice lessons in my private voice studio, as well as teaching classes at Basiaco High School. So it's been really wonderful. It's been a great source of consistency in my career 
to have um, the teaching and the opportunity to give my classes at schools. Um, so that is a little bit more of what I do in addition to performing. Thank you. Hi, so when Francisca approached me and asked me this question, I thought to myself, I have a lot to say about this. So I do suggest that if somebody is starting out as a singer, a musician, even if it's their passion that they would love to do full time, I think it's wise to do something on the side as well. Music is my main passion, but it doesn't keep me busy 24 seven or bring in enough income to be a full time job for me personally. So I have a vintage business on the side called Blossom and Bloom that I run out of my house and I'm still always looking for artistic, creative projects and ways to earn money. And I do want to say, although it is recommended to have something on the side, if you're a singer or musician or someone starting out or someone who's been doing this for many years, I do have to say when I first started when I was 18, that's many years ago, um, there were not many people doing this. So what's really amazing though about doing music nowadays is that there's so many connections, so many female singers coming out, putting out their music, spreading light and, you know, giving each other kind of support and, and networking opportunities. So although I don't want to dissuade anyone from doing music, I do think it's important to have a side thing as well. But I still want to say there's so much support and love and so many opportunities more than there ever were before. So that's pretty cool. Hi there. So Francisca asked me to speak a little bit about how you can maximize your potential in earning money as an artist. Um, and if it's true that you can make money as a singer, as an artist in the from female world. So, um, definitely I'll tell you this in order to get out there and get your name out there, you have to create a lot of content. Now content costs money. So you're going to have to find side kind of little jobs to earn money so that you can create that content. And then once the content is created and your name gets out there, you can start making money on the artistic side of you. For example, if you wanna make money on your music. Um, so because it costs a lot of money to make the music and to get the music out there and to get people to like your music and then people can start hiring you, let's say for gigs, um, to perform your music to get there, to get that money to actually create the music is a lot of money. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna try to find side things to be able to earn that money. For example, um, I teach private voice lessons and private piano lessons, and that is like a side job to help me earn money so that I can create my music. Um, and once I am a singer and I get jobs and gigs, because people know my music out there, that's when I can start earning money and relying on the gigs. But there's, it's a constant um, thing that you have to keep on having these side jobs to be able to pay for investing in your career as a firm female artist. So um, you can literally find anything really. It could be any little side job that you can do with your music um, for money to help you grow in your career. Um, so that's my advice and it's definitely doable. Um, and I wish you luck um, to whoever I am talking to out there. I'm also talking to myself. Um, it's a constant thing to work on and eventually you get there and you can start relying on income, um, you know, all the time just from your actual music that's out there already. But to create content does cost money. So you do have to find anything, any side job, anything that can help you earn money to be able to create the content that you love. And we are trying to make the From Female world bigger and better. So come join, um, put out some content there. You, I'm sure whoever I am talking to and whoever is listening to this is extremely talented and has anything to show the world. So it's worth all the effort, it really is. And you can do it just with small baby steps. Anyway, this is Dobby Bear, I'm here. Hi ladies, how are you? Well, Francesca asked me to speak about um, making original music 
now and how it goes along with the uh, Parnassa. So my name is Inbar Tabib and I'm a singer, songwriter and composer. And um, from what I experience, um, I don't make a lot of money off of my original music. I must say that uh, I've uploaded to YouTube only this year. And I'm sure some of you are on Spotify and iTunes. Um, I'm not there yet. I'm taking it step by step. So it's really not profitable, but um, I think it's profitable for my neshama. Um, I know it's very expensive to make original music and some of you also make uh, music videos. Um, I don't do that. Uh, but still, it's very expensive to make original music and I think it's worth it because I think my fans are always into um, wanting to hear new songs and refreshing um, our material and I think it's worth it in the long run. Um, but I actually don't do it because it's uh, profitable uh, money-wise. I do it because uh, I know that that's what my fans want and I love doing it. And um, maybe one day if people will actually know to acknowledge um, you know, artists and original music and they will be willing to pay for it. In Israel it's less common. Uh, in the U.S. it's more common, uh, then maybe it will be profitable. So I'm sharing this with you. Take care from Israel. Hi, everybody. My name is Judith Gerzi. I'm from, I live in Ramat Bet Shemesh. I'm originally from London, England, but I now live in Israel. Um, Baruch Hashem, I have a big family. Um, very, very busy. I'm a singer, songwriter, and performer. That is my absolute passion. And one day... I really hope for that to be my main income. But the reality is, for a few different reasons, I have a few different jobs. Um, in the market for professional singers, women singers in Israel, it's very difficult. Um, it's much better than it is in England. In England, growing up, there was absolutely nothing, nothing. In fact, I never sang until I was 25 um, and moved to Israel, or 24. Um, I do get to do performances. I have been blessed to actually do a performance and be flown to Florida and London. Um, but the reality is I work, I, I studied art in university and I love working with people. So I actually also own, you can see this is my wig salon here. Um, I'm a Scheitel Macha, I sell wigs and I also have a Gemach um, where we donate. I'm the representative of a shawl, so we donate wigs. Um, I also teach singing lessons. I give vocal lessons. Um, and that is a humongous um, joy to help somebody else develop their love and to help them that way. I'm part of a singing academy as well. It's a dance academy and I joined up with them too. So use your artistic way as much as you can. I'm hoping that together we can make it much more that women do have bigger and more opportunities to sing and make an income and a, and a living off it. But right now, the reality is it's unlikely to be able to um, support a family just on that alone. Okay, wishing everybody Hatzlacha Rabbah. I can't wait to hear all of you sing. Bye. Hi, my name is Miriam Sandler. I want to thank Francisca for asking me to participate in this program. Um, I've been a professional singer for over 25 years, um, but as a performer, um, I don't really have jobs to perform all the time. So what I've started to do for many years is uh, teach voice. I'm a vocal coach and I'm also a camp director and musical uh, director. So I started a performing arts conservatory camp for middle school and high school girls about six years ago. And um, I also teach middle school and high school girls. And I also have had a women's vocal ensemble. We have a lot of fun singing and harmonizing. And I just find that um, this type of work gives me more steady income. And it's also a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy um, seeing women and girls kind of coming into themselves as performing artists and blossoming. I feel very privileged 
um, an honor to share my gifts, my training with my students um, and my campers. Um, I actually am a graduate from the University of Miami. I studied jazz vocal performance there. And, um, and then after I graduated college, I basically traveled as a background singer for many different recording artists all over the world. I also performed as a soloist with many bands. And so I have background in singing many different styles of music. Um, I am also a recording artist. I've recorded my own CDs. So um, I've brought some of my students into the recording studio to have them experience what it's like to um, sing and record in a studio, which is very different. So um, basically, yeah, I have had to um, use my other skills as an instructor um, to train people um, and enhance their experience as performers just to get a more steady income. And yeah, when I get um, the chance to perform, that's definitely um, a lot of fun and it's what I love to do and enjoy. But teaching um, has been my primary source of income really for the last several years. Okay, thank you so much. I hope this helps and um, keep singing. Hello, my name is Laura Melnikoff and I'm a professional cellist. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in cello performance and I've been actively performing since a young age as a product of the youth arts programming in New York City. After becoming religious and starting a family, Continuing my career has taken some interesting turns, and so I'm going to talk about the financial ways I've made it work. Having a subsidizing business has always seemed like the norm for me, as the vast majority of my cello teachers and music professors taught in part to subsidize their performing careers. This was knowledge that I clung to as I started to keep Shabbos, as I knew I'd be letting go of too many performances to be able to rely on them for steady income. Truthfully, teaching as a fulfilling and meaningful occupation in itself was something I only came to see much later, which speaks to how typical it was as a day job or side hustle for the performing musicians I was raised with. But I also need to talk about parental care of children. It helped me a great deal to think about the financial meanings of the job of caring for my own children. I think the arrangement my husband and I have made about this has brought me a lot of clarity on the topic, so this is what I found. After my first child was born, I took a step back from the music world, and my husband began an intensive degree program. I was much less active in music, including teaching, and much more active in caring for my child. My husband had to do a lot of travel at that point, and so I could only take on work that paid enough to justify the expenses that had become very clear. I had to pay for a, sub a substitute at my job teaching at a cheder, I had to pay for a babysitter, and I had to pay for any associated travel. These were all expenses associated with me subbing out or not going to my job as a caregiver of my own child, a job whose hours I had taken on in order to subsidize my husband successfully attending his degree program. The last long-term job I had was at Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish, which closed in January 2020. As an off-Broadway contract, there was no problem with me subbing out the shows that were on Shabbos. I just wouldn't see that money. With my needs for keeping Shabbos and having a babysitter since my husband was traveling during the work week, about half my take-home pay went to the babysitter. And that's why it made sense to support my husband in pursuing his career. My earning potential, including Shabbos as a musician, is much lower than his in his field. Even putting aside the expenses of Jewish life, the expenses of having children stretch a, a gigging musician's earning potential to the stress point. So I believe we have a solution. It did take time away from my career, but I view that as an investment. It's how we're making my work in the arts happen while having the children I have always hoped for. This way, I have more freedom to spend more time with my children since I don't need to chase down every paying gig I catch wind of. I can also do more of the non-paid projects that I want to do since I'm not spending that time on projects that I would have had to do for the money. This also means that I can pursue my own personal creative interests under my control and direction with more freedom. And for me personally, I stopped performing because it was not exciting for me anymore and the amount of energy that had to go into it didn't pay off with the amount of money I was making with performing. 
So I use my side skills <clears throat> like business and online visibility, social media growth, business strategies to by helping other women create businesses to uh, make an income. And my music stays my hobby, which I do very professionally, but I treat it as a hobby because I do not expect to support my family with that income.